Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Paul Reed and I'm a professional photographer. One of the most popular questions that I get asked during my workshops and then also just people messaging me is what is the best way to print monochrome photographs? That's what I'm going to be going into today. But first I just want to say I had a, an amazing response from last week's video and that was the video about Simon Murphy and his exhibition in Glasgow. So look, just such great response and lots of people going to visit his exhibition. It's a fantastic exhibition. If you haven't gone to see it yet, then you should. It's, it's only there until the end of January. In fact, what I've had to do because of popular demand, I've had to put another workshop on in Glasgow in January just for the people that wanted to tie in their workshop with me with a visit to his exhibition. And that's just great. What we're going to do is we're going to do our usual workshop that we do in Glasgow, but then at the end of it, we're going to all go to Simon Murphy's exhibition. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing that again. I've got just a few spaces left on it. So if you want to be part of that workshop, if you want to come along to that and then go and see that exhibition in January, then just go to the link in the description, which will just be my website. And yeah, give me a shout and hopefully, you know, you can come along. So how should you be printing your monochrome images? There's a number of options available and what I would suggest is that you might need to pause this video and go and make yourself a cup of tea and then come back and sit down and relax because there's this quite a bit of information overload here. So relax, we're going to be here for a little bit just discussing the various methods of printing. So I'm going to go through the methods which I consider whenever I'm going to print something that I really love and like I say I'm really just talking about monochrome photography here but some of these things obviously you can use for colour some of them you can't but this is for monochrome photography so for me we've got C type prints that's the letter C and you know that's a it's a traditional photographic print we've got inkjet printing which is also known as Zikli or how it looks whenever you whenever you look how it's spelled it's like G-I-C-L-E-E -E, something like that so you'll have heard of it maybe from that it just means it's inkjet prints using archival link really we've got traditional black and white photographic prints that's possible these days from a digital file just as it was from negatives and of course there's platinum palladium prints which I never stop going on about on these videos but platinum palladium prints is also a great method for printing black and white prints. I know there's lots of other methods of printing, I know there's certainly lots of other alternative methods, you know tin type, there's, there's just so many that I'm not going into those, I'm just going into the ones that I would consider as a photographer whenever I'm considering printing some of my work. I think there's three factors to take into consideration whenever you're thinking about printing your black and white prints and it's firstly how do the prints look does that look go with the image that you're deciding to print and all of these printing methods all look different from each other so that's you know the first thing to consider the second thing to consider is the longevity of those prints. How long will they last? So that's something to consider in all of these methods. How long are you comfortable with of how long that print will last? And then the last thing to consider is how much do these things cost? All various costs for all of these. So again, it's something to take into consideration. So firstly, let's have a look at how these actually look now I can't show you how these look because that's the thing with prints is you have to see these prints up front you have to see them with your own eyes to know how they look and I would suggest that you know you'd get a smaller print with all of these different methods 
whenever you're deciding what way you want to go with these but I'll try my best to explain you know how these prints do look. A C type print is a traditional photographic print it's the sort of prints that were we printed from negatives for colour film back in the day and but these days it can be done with digital files using you know technology with laser it's like basically laser printed onto the paper so so C type prints how they look is there's a great tonal range to those prints you can get them in the various different finishes you know matte uh, or gloss or you know in between so but there's a great tonal range to these images and you know they, they do look great the only way I could explain it really is it looks like a photograph it looks how you would expect a photographic print to look now let's talk about inkjet prints so inkjet prints can be quite stunning to look at they are, can be very contrasty they can have a lot of punch with them and that is due to the method that they're printed you know they're printed you know the, those images are sprayed on there you know in dots the thing that they don't have that the c type prints have is they don't have um as great a tonal range so it just inkjet it's not possible for it to do every single tone in those black and white images just because of the way that the inkjet process works that doesn't mean to say that it's a bad process because like i said those prints can be really punchy just amazing there's so many different finishes that you can have it's really what sort of paper that the that the inkjet goes on but there's so many different uh, different types of paper that that can be used on and they can look fantastic but like i say it just hasn't got the same tonal range as what a c type print has got then we've got black and white traditional silver gelatin prints and on fiber based paper the, these look beautiful in my opinion they look better than what an inkjet print or a c-type print would look it's got that fantastic tonal range just as the c-type prints have but you know there is a look to those traditional black and white prints the other thing as well is the benefit of a traditional black and white print is that there is no chance of any color cast being on there on you know on c type prints and uh, and i think even even inkjet if you view the image in a certain light in a certain way then there can be a slight color cast so you're not sometimes getting the very black and whites that you actually want i'll be honest with you you'd have to have an eagle eye to spot that so but it's just something to take into consideration that a traditional silver gelatin fiber based print has no color cast is black and white full tonal range beautiful prints finally we've got platinum palladium prints now platinum palladium prints they have got that full tonal range the best tonal range better than any of the methods it's you know they're absolutely beautiful and i think most people that have ever seen a a platinum palladium print you know, I've just fallen in love with platinum palladium prints as, as I have but you need to kind of understand you know what they look like and what they're best for so they are best for the tonality that full tonal range they're a very matte print so if you ever see you know if you, if you like you know where you kind of tilt the the print and then you see this little sheen off it and things like that you're not going to get that with a, a platinum palladium print what that's fantastic for is obviously whenever you've got that on a wall there's not going to be any reflections coming off those prints they're just incredible looking prints and they've normally got you know they normally kind of lean to like a warmer tone than black and white prints so whichever of those looks it is that really suits the image that you're wanting printed that may be the way that you should print those prints but the next thing to consider is how long those prints are going to last how comfortable you feel about how long you know they're going to last and some of these 
you know some of these amounts of time that um, you know that have been researched into how long they'll last it, it's kind of hard to say because you know nobody has been alive on this earth for 200 years so it's not proven like that it's proved through other methods but what I'm going to be reading to you as in how long these prints last is what the research says that they'll last. What I must say is with C-type prints and inkjet prints there are some things to take into consideration whenever you think about the longevity. Certainly inkjet prints they they're fragile you know that that inkjet is sprayed onto that paper and you know you could just scratch that off with your thumbnail you, you know fingerprints those various things also if you've got a print that's just in bright sunlight all of the time where there's just this beaming sunlight on those images all of the time that's gonna last a lot shorter than if you say just had that print in a box somewhere there's polaroid prints that are you know still about now and haven't faded because people have had them in albums prints can fade because of just certain you know certain situations that they're that they're in the air the sun all sorts of things and how you touch them and how you handle them so but in general these are the amounts of time that these prints last so c-type prints if they were in total darkness then they could last over over 200 years they say but it's more likely that you know if they're kind of on display and you know they're in kind of various light that it would still be over 100 years that a c-type print would last inkjet prints how long do they last so they seem to last actually a lot longer than what you would think it, things have just improved so much with inkjet and those archival inks that Epson make you know you're looking at like over 200 years of those last even if they weren't in total darkness so actually those prints you know can last a long time like I said the only problem with inkjet prints is just that they are delicate but if they're in a frame and that's something else that you've got to take into consideration if that frame has got sort of you know glass on it that's UV protected that's also going to help with the longevity of a print but you're looking at over 200 years for an archival inkjet print now we're on to the more traditional printing methods the old ways and there is you know more proof in how long these things last compared to the modern methods however you know that these things could last even longer than what we know they last right now we're looking at silver gelatin prints to be lasting over 700 years and you know that's just a, a real fantastic thing to know is that that those prints providing they've been you know developed and fixed correctly of course they will last you know such a long time and i'm sure also if they were in total darkness in a box they would last even longer but silver gelatin prints are also you know like a a, a desirable print for collectors uh, art collectors as are platinum palladium prints very desirable for art collectors um more so than inkjet prints and c-type prints inkjet and c-type aren't quite as desirable for art buyers and finally platinum palladium prints so platinum palladium prints we might as well just say that they last forever because research shows that they should be last lasting over a thousand years it's just not even worth saying how long that these things are going to last because they're going to outlast everything <laughs> they'll last as long as the paper lasts okay so the last factor which is important is how much these things cost to print and this is an important part depending on who your audience is who you want to are, are these prints just for you just to put on your wall just for you to admire and love or are these prints that you're going to want to sell because if you're going to want to sell these prints then the cost of printing them will come into account because 
you need to know what sort of price you're going to charge for those prints and the more that it costs then the more that you've got to charge for those prints and then you're really getting into an art buyer's market rather than just somebody who wants a nice print for their wall. The cheapest method of printing is actually C-type printing. In comparison of all these, I'm gonna use a 20 by 24 inch print. And this is what I would call an average price of one of those prints. So for a C-type print, you're looking at about 25 pounds for one of those prints. For inkjet prints, we're looking at about 35 pounds. Not really a lot of difference between those. So your decision with those two different types of prints will be more to do with this thing about the tonality of it and how long they last. Then we do a huge leap up for silver gelatin fiber based prints because the cost of printing for one of those as a 20 by 24 is around 90 pounds. So you really start to get up there then in what you're gonna to have to charge if you were actually selling one of those prints. Once you're even kind of charging 100 pounds, 150 pounds or anything like that for a print, you're not looking at the a lot of the general public who just want to go to a shop and buy a print and go that picture looks nice I'll have that for the wall you're looking at people that are buying art because they love art and they want something that's really nice that they're going to admire and then finally the most expensive of these methods is platinum palladium and for a 20 by 24 print you're going to be looking at round about 850 pounds for a 20 by 24 platinum palladium print printed for you. Again, that's an art buyer's market. Nobody, you know, is just a luxury, a platinum palladium print, but so is a silver gelatin uh, fiber based print, really. They're really luxury prints, something that somebody just wants to keep and love and look at and just be so, you know, happy with that art. It's not just somebody who fancies a quick picture for the wall. Now, I'm not saying any of these methods, one's better than the other or anything like that. Yes, I do prefer the platinum palladium process. I've printed platinum palladium myself, um, but also I get Roberto at RJ Print Lab to print pretty much all of my platinum palladium prints. And that's just because he's such an expert at it and I can trust him. It, you know, he lets me go to the lab and you know, we, we print all day, which I've got videos, which I'll leave up there for you to look at. It's just a fantastic way of printing, but it is expensive. And I guess it's a little bit like the same reason why a lot of us own a Leica camera is that it's not just about the camera, it's about how it feels, how it looks, it's the quality of it. And it's the same with platinum palladium prints. There is nothing to rival a platinum palladium print in my opinion, in the way it looks. It's on a whole other level, but it just might not be the right printing method for you if you are selling prints to, you know, an, an end of the market which don't really want to pay a lot for prints. So that's your lot. That's the printing methods that I would consider printing. And whenever I have my exhibition, it's going to be mainly platinum palladium prints that's at that. I'm really, you know, concentrating on platinum palladium prints. But if I was to do, say, another exhibition, it may be that I decide to go down the C-type print route or the silver gelatin route. It really just depends on what you feel suits the photography that you're producing. Thanks again for watching everybody, I really appreciate it. I hope this video has helped you kind of get more of an idea of the different print types and what you might consider. I know this video won't have been for everybody. It's been a bit of a long-winded one, but there's no other way to put this across. It's a question I get asked so often that I just thought, let's get a video out there. It might not be the most popular video that I've done, 
but I just thought it'd be good to get this video out there. If you haven't already seen them, check out some of my previous videos. Certainly that last one that I did with the exhibition of Simon Murphy, that's a fantastic video to watch and look at his work and just, he's just a, a, an amazing photographer. And don't forget, I've got some spaces left on that January workshop in Glasgow and we're gonna be going to see his exhibition too. Whatever way that you decide to print, just print something. Just print that work because it's no good on your computer, it's no good on your smartphone. Whatever way you decide to print, get printing. See you next time.